I'm here in Cambridge, New York to get a peek inside the studio of sporting artist Adriano Minocchio. Let's go. I never in my wildest dreams thought I would end up being a, a painter. My dad was a journalist, a uh, foreign correspondent, and I think I was in sophomore year of high school. He was going to Yankee Stadium to cover a soccer match between uh, the great Pelé and an Italian team, and he asked me if I wanted to go. Now, being from the city and a Yankee fan, I said, sure. And the day before we left, he handed me his 120 Rolex camera, which I had never used before, showed me how to use it, showed me f-stops and focus. and. We went to the game, I took some photographs, and they were published in one of the daily newspapers that he worked for, and I got the bug. I mean, it was, it was instant. I became a photojournalist, I did that for about 15 years. Every day was another experience. Everything from spending time with Muhammad Ali at his training camp to uh, photographing Tennessee Williams to go into the White House to, it was really an exciting time. But I was getting burned out from the travel. We had a young son at the time and I was never home. The business was changing. We were going from film to video. I was a little intimidated about that move. And I happened to be in Phoenix, Arizona with my wife, Teresa, one year covering an IndyCar race. We had a day off, went to the Herd Museum and it was a show of the Cowboy Artists of America, which was fascinating. It just blew me away. I'd never seen anything like it. And I started to think, gee, I'd like to be a painter. Um, I had some background, obviously being a photographer, you know, composition and light and color and that sort of thing, but um, I really knew nothing about painting. So I spent about a year at the Nourishell Library just reading techniques of the old masters. And one day I sprung the news to my wife, hey, I'm closing the uh, news agency and I'm gonna become a painter. And I just, just started painting. I mean, it really wasn't, I didn't stop and think that, gee, maybe you really shouldn't be doing this. You really don't know what you're doing. It was self-taught and just wanted to find out what this world was like and I discovered it. Little by little I started to focus more and more on wildlife, uh, on the outdoors. I was just learning how to fly fish at the time and a friend of mine took me up to Brewster. We were fishing the Croton Watershed, which is a beautiful uh, area. And he asked me to do a pencil sketch of him landing a fish. And I did, and I said, yeah, you know, that was, that was fun, that was interesting. And I just started doing more and more scenes of water. I'll make a preliminary sketch, thumbnail sketches to see if the composition works, and then I sketch a rough sketch on a gessoed, smooth board. Because there's very little texture, I build up a layer. So what I do is I rough in, I, I block in the scene using just burnt sienna, white, and a little blue. I'm able to see what the composition looks like. Also, it gives that base coat, it gives that texture and, and, and surface that I can work on. When that dries, then I start to put in color. And again, I'll do it loosely. I won't get into detail. And I'll let it dry and I'll, and I'll slowly continue to build. When I'm painting water, um, there may be six, seven, eight, nine coats, different layers that I'm building in, dark and lights, different colors, till I begin to feel that there's some depth to that scene. There is one painting that I did a number of years ago. We were in Yellowstone, which is one of my favorite places to paint. Um, we used to go quite often. Um, and there's a stretch of the Firehole River. And it is, to me, it's, it's magical. There's something about it. Um, you know, the thing was, I had to get there before the sun came up every morning and we, Therese and I would walk along the banks and the sun would come up and it'd be elk grazing and buffalo and geese taking off. And the river had a magic to it, had a color. It had a movement to it, very winding. Um, and I did a painting and it's called My Favorite Stretch. And it's funny because one year we were doing a, a, a show, a sportsman show, and I had a print of it. And the guy came up to me and he says, that's my favorite stretch. 
So I says to him, do you know where that is? He says, I know exactly where that is. He says, that's the, that's a fire hole in Yellowstone by the parking area. He says, that is my favorite spot in the world. I says, mine too. So this is, that was one painting that I always go back to thinking about, you know, what to me is a perfect scene. The person in most of my paintings is Ted Patlin, my dear, long lost brother. <laughs> I met Teddy uh, some 40 something years ago at a sportsman show down in Suffern, New York. He came over, looked at my work, offered to do some framing. Ted's a teacher, a retired teacher. And uh, he said, hey, if you ever want to go fishing, why don't you give me a call? And I, I was fly fishing at the time, but I wasn't really great at it or good at it. And I started to go fishing with Ted and he just, the two of us just clicked. I mean, I'd find a spot and say, hey, Ted, you mind standing over there in the sun? And it, you know, it would just make the painting. It would just make the whole scene. And he and I, we, we were joking a while back uh, about how many rivers and streams we fished together over the last 40 years, and we came up with 99. So I told him, he and I, we have to find one more stream to make it an even 100. You know, I enjoyed my previous career but there were a lot of limitations. You know, you were given an assignment, you know, make sure you come back with this, 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 and this, uh, which was exciting. But there were, there were the deadlines, there was that um, a constant worry about producing something for someone else. Art has given me the opportunity to really express myself the way I want to. And I think that's been the greatest, greatest thing for me.